that is manifesting in every area of my life. Increase in your favor, increase in your goodness, increase in your kindness, increase in your wonders, increase in your blessings. Lord, I thank you. Increase in your grace, increase in your wisdom. Lord, I appreciate you. Thank you for increasing us on every side with your glory, with your wonders, with your favor. Lord, I say thank you. When you say it in, you bring it to pass. Blessed be your holy name. For my blessing level is changing this month. Positively, numerically, spiritually, financially, materially. My blessing level is changing this month. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever has been mysterious around your life, why things are not working well, they will be scattered in this service. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Any strange power manipulating issues in your life negatively, by the mystery of the communion, their spell over your life will be shut up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Praise God. In this teaching, this evening, our focus is on Towards the delivery of Operation 615. God is a God of ways. He said, My ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. As the heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways far from your ways, and my thoughts far from your thoughts. Every time God announces a thing, just know that a season is about to start for someone. A season is about to start and a season is about to end. Whatever is not good in your life, whatever, neither does he think the way man thinks. Man is limited by sight. But God is omnipotent in his acts. So if he says that our attendance will double come July 8, the rest are sure it will come to pass. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Not only that, our home cell, all our home cells is going to experience a double. Say with me, double. double. Say with me, double. double. Now, both in prayer, in outreach, the angels of God will be ministering to them. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The angels of God will be ministering to them, reaching out to them, convicting them, compelling them. There is nothing God wants to bring to pass that is limited in approach to get it done. Anything God wants to bring to pass, he's not short of ideas. He's not short of strategies. He knows how to make a way where there is no way. So be rest assured, it will come to pass. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And concerning you, he said you will be enthroned. Spiritually, you will be enthroned. Amen. Financially, you will be enthroned. Amen. As a family, your family level will change. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Every time God alters what he is said to do, he steers up expectation in the heart of the people. Expectation. Expectation. David said, <laughs> My soul, wait thou only upon the Lord, for my expectation is of him. For my expectation is of him. Hear me? Every time God says a thing, people that believe it first, they are the ones that encounter it first. They are the ones that see it first. Why? God is not a liar. God is not telling us anything to get us only excited. He's telling us to things he is set to accomplish in our life. Surely there is an end and thy expectation. 
and thy expectation. And thy expectation. As in thy expectation. I see you changing levels. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, We are like them that dream. I want you to know this. Write it down in case you care. By the time we are through with this operation 615, people that have opened their mouth to mock you, they will be among those that will gather to celebrate you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I proved it in my life. It has worked over and over. I've looked and I've depended on God. Where men have mocked me, God has given me testimony. God will give you a testimony. I know they are waiting to see what will become of you. This one every day is church. Every day is church. Every day is church. Hear me? All the people that have opened their mouth to mock you, they will follow you to this church. Make that amen louder. When God talks about enthronement, he talks about change of status. When God wants to change your level, he doesn't need your muscle. He said, without me, you can do nothing. You can't lift yourself. Can you lift yourself? No man can lift himself. Everyone that is lifted, they were lifted up by God. So within these two fifty-two, uh, 50, within these fifty-two days, there will be sporadic, dramatic, all-round change amen. taking place for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now hear this. I don't know what you wrote in Shiloh 2017. Within these fifty-two days, I just had God say, "Now somebody's list will be complete." Amen. If you are saying amen, you are the person I'm talking about. Amen. But now you look as if nothing is happening around you. <laughs> you may not see the rain. You may not even hear of the wind. But the valley shall be filled. He said, but the valley shall be filled. Hear me? Don't wait for signs around. Believe what God has said. By my little understanding, every time you believe what God has said, you attract the hand of God. Who has believed our reports? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So anything you believe, you begin to attract. Our belief attracts the hand of God's performance. The moment you begin to believe something now, you have changed the tide in the realm of the spirit. Things begin to change. It doesn't matter what, what is happening or who is involved. Things begin to change in the realm of the spirit. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be. <laughs> because you believe there shall be. Because you believe there shall be. Because you believe there shall be. Anything you don't believe, don't become. You don't become what you don't believe. You only become what you believe. Who has believed our reports? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So the hand of the Lord is always in the direction of people that believe. What are they believing? My God can do it. My God can bring it to pass. My God can make it happen. Do you know what? Let me surprise someone. Do you know that every time you increase the frequency of your believing, you frustrate your enemies? You f they get frustrated. Can they resist the hand of God? Can your enemy turn back the hand of God? Scripture said, the Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall this annul? His hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? Hear me? When God's hand is in the direction of one that believes, anyone that is an obstacle will be cleared from the way. I see God clearing your obstacles. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better than amen. amen. But for this to come to pass, one thing that every one of us need is what we call unbroken focus. Your focus must be unbroken. You must not waver. 
you must not give yourself to doubt whether it will work or whether it will not work. Scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He said, let that man not think that he will receive anything good from the Lord. The moment you begin to doubt, are you sure? That's how he said it before. Are you sure? A double-minded man. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. God told Papa one day, make one of your eyes to look up and one to look down. And he said, it's not possible. He said, any time your eyes begin to go away from me, don't think you are trusting me. It is either you are trusting God wholeheartedly or you are not trusting him at all. In the world, they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket, but not in this kingdom. In this kingdom, you put all your trust in God. The moment you begin to have alternative, God will leave you alone. They say, don't put all your eggs in one basket too, so that if you break, you can have some somewhere. It's a lie. In this kingdom, you put all your eggs in God. You put all your eggs in God. So you need unbroken focus. Your focus must be, must be hard. David said, my soul followeth hard after thee. Why do you need an unbroken focus? Why? Because anytime God announces something new to happen for you, there will always be adversaries. There will always be Sambalat and Tobias. There will always be enemies planted to get you distracted. There will always be enemies to create depression. There will always be enemies to make you lose concentration. Hear me? They are always there. They've always been there. There is no good agenda announced by God that will not attract enemies. The more real the blessings, the more consolidated your enemies become. And to your greatest surprise, the enemies we are talking about will not come from outside. They will come from within the church. They will come from within the church. So it is your choice to determine what you give attention to. Judas was called to be among those that will inherit a crown. But he, he gave in to distraction and he lost it and lost it well. He lost it and lost it well. Jesus was in the spirit when he picked Judas. But he became a victim. He was the one that set his own trap. He set his own trap by himself. And the trap he set was the one that caught him. He thought he was distracting the focus of Jesus. Not knowing that he was helping Jesus to accomplish his mission. Hear me? In case you don't know, anyone that is used of the devil to distract you or trouble you, or make you get weary in the process of pursuit, they are the one losing out. I'm the one telling you, they are the ones losing out. You will reach your goal, but they will miss their goal. You will reach your goal, but they will miss their goal. After Paul and Silas shook the prison, have you checked? We never heard of Silas again. Have you checked? We never heard of Silas again. We only heard Paul and Silas. They prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. After the shaking of the prison, where did you hear of Silas again? That was the end. Destruction took Silas.
So you we must ignore. Tell your neighbor, ignore. ignore. Hear me? The enemy has a way of appealing to your attention. Anything that succeeds in catching your attention will give you direction. The enemy has a way of appealing to our attention just to get you distracted. Just to get you distracted. People that easily lose focus, there are people that have never been able to define where they are going, where they are going, what they are pursuing. People that are easily distracted, easily, easily distracted. They've not been able to pin down where they are going. They've not been able to pin down what they are pursuing. And you know, when you don't know where you are going, when you don't know what you are pursuing, anything you see may look like it. Am I saying the truth? It's just like a young man now that says he wants to marry. Any girl you see is a fine girl. Ah, bless you, this one, fine person. Hear me? That brother will end up doing what we call random sampling. He will be sampling sisters in church. I remember in one of my stations, a brother proposed to six sisters in the same choir. <laughs> and all of them at different times, so they never knew that this one never knew he was talking to this one. This one never knew he was talking to this one. And you know, sisters, they are ever ready. Ever ready, ever waiting. <laughs> because everybody is believing God. Am I saying the truth? And when they see someone that uh, presents himself to be ready, <laughs> they too, they are ready. <laughs> it's a sign that he doesn't know what he's looking for. Doesn't know what he's looking for. Those days when we are on campus fellowship, we used to have one brother, one brother, his name is Rasine, Rasine Osin. That brother, he was in drama unit. That brother, trouble sisters. You know, year one, they have new, new sisters. <laughs> when they come, uh, you will get one new one. So one day, our president, who is a pastor in Detana, one day sat him down that, um, this thing you are doing is not canceling. There is a spirit disturbing you. I think there is a marine spirit troubling you. At first he felt offended, but later he agreed that something was troubling him. Okay, you see one sister now you don't like. The next one you... Ah! If he escort this one today, the next fellowship is escorting another one. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Random sampling. But finally, God delivered him. Amen. That's how God will deliver you. Amen. We must ignore every form of distraction. Hear me? Distraction does not come like distraction, it comes like an attraction. I like what one of my mentors said. Anything you don't like can catch you. I believe it. Anything you don't like can do what? It can't catch you. You are always distracted with what you like. Anything you don't like can't catch you. A gossip catch you now because you like the gossip. Am I saying the truth? What you don't like can't catch you. You are always trapped by what you like. If you don't like it, you will react against it. But if you like it, you will be interested. That's why when I see something, the first thing that I will remember what my mentor told me, what you don't like can't catch you. What you don't like can't get your interest. What you don't like can't buy your time. We are always trapped by what we like. So you can define your distraction. 
so that when you see them you avoid them this is not where i'm going i can't waste my energy on this i can't waste my brain on this i can't waste my mind on this you like it so you are attracted to it you like it because you are interested in it anything you are interested that's what you like hearing because you like it you keep hearing it no one that jesus said take heed to what you hear have you seen a handball player getting more interested in football no tell me a handball player he wants to be a star in handball he's not interested in football that's how when he entered the field one day, instead of using his hand, he will use his leg. Through of us. You must ignore every form of distraction. Anything that is an enemy to your focus is a distraction. Concerning Jesus, scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and he despised the shame. despise the shame hear me as far as this church is concerned whether you like it or not people will talk about you am i saying the truth if they are talking about me is it you they will come you're able to talk but if every fly that pass you look where he's passing you have lost your way If they are talking about dead bodies, is it you that is alive that we will not talk about? Ignore every form of distraction. Ignore it. Once you succeed in securing your focus, you are good to go. You are good to go. Good to go. And I won't forget writing this down. One of my foremost mentors told me, if you refuse to be distracted, very soon, your detractors will soon be attracted. If you refuse to be distracted, very soon, your detractors will soon be attracted. So in pursuit of what God has in store for us this season, one major propeller, one major activator, one major trigger every one of us need is what we call passion. Say with me, passion. Passion is an inner drive. Say with me, an inner drive. Passion is an inner drive that keeps you on the go when others are not willing to go. It keeps you on the go. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee to see thy power as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Passion. Passion is an inner longing to see what you have never seen before. It's an inner longing. It's inborn. Nobody can quench passion when it is born. When passion is born inside of you, on seeing something new break out in your life, on accomplishing something new in your life, nobody can stop you. Because until you reach it, you are not yet satisfied. In your sleep, the passion is still burning. You will be praying, let the day break quick. I want to get something done. When you become a man of passion, you become result-oriented. People of passion, they are always seeking of improvement. People of passion, they are always seeking of improvement. Reverend Simon Afolabi said, the largest room in the world is the room for improvement. Don't wait for anybody to tell you you are trying. No matter what you have tried to do now, somebody has done more than that. 
So you, you, you are the only one that can improve on what you are doing. Don't wait for anybody to clap hand for you. When you are waiting for people to clap hand for you, there is every tendency that you begin to relax. Yes, I'm doing well. Now they are clapping hand for me. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. My brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press. Tell your neighbor, I press. I press unto the mark of the high calling. I do not count myself to have attained. I do not count myself to have apprehended. No matter what you have done, you can do more better. So passion keeps you on the go. You are never satisfied with what you have done. Anytime you begin to have a sense of accomplishment, watch out, very soon you become a proverb. I remember Dr. Miles Morrow told Papa that thank God for the 50,000 capacity auditorium that has been built. If you sit down to celebrate it, you will soon be a proverb. Now, are they thinking of 50,000 capacity? No, they have left that realm. They are thinking of the ark. The ark that can house 200,000. So, the implication is this. No matter what you have, have achieved, it will soon be a proverb. Go for something bigger. Press on. The only sustaining force in pressing on in, is passion. You need passion to sustain what you want to accomplish. In 2 Kings chapter 10 and verse 16, he said, he said, come and see my zeal for the Lord. Come and see. Come and see. Zeal that cannot be seen is fake. Every zeal can be seen. Your zeal cannot be hidden. It is reflective. Zeal is reflective. If you have zeal, it is not hidden in your heart. It is shown in your manifestation. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. Now can someone see your zeal for God? You that I'm seeing in church now. Can your zeal be seen? Can your zeal be seen? Come and see my zeal for God. Hear me? Nobody can borrow you zeal. Zeal is not a gift. Zeal is what you steer by yourself. Come and see. Zeal is not a gift. It's what you steer by yourself. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. So when zeal is at work, it cannot be hidden. A classic example of people that have zeal, Daniel, Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. <laughs> they have zeal for prayer and unburdened zeal. To the point that they said nobody should pray again. They say, me, not pray. It's okay. Open the window. I will be praying so that you'll be seeing me. I will be praying so that you'll be seeing me. Should I tell you something? Even in this church, there are people that are angry when prayer is going on. They say, send uh, Pastor Kelly. Let him go and check whether he's praying. Send Pastor Mike. Go and check whether he's praying. Oh, send, past, uh, send the innocent. Innocent. Storm, go and check whether he's praying. They are enemies of prayer. Any person that is angry with prayer is a winch. I'm telling you the truth. Any person angry with prayer is what? A winch. It's only a winch that will be angry that a prayer is praying. Am I praying to you? No, answer me. Are you the one answering the prayer? So why are you angry with the prayer? If you are not a winch. It takes a winch to be angry that prayer is going on. So, they said, any person that prayed will throw him to the lion's den. He said, okay, for you to say that, we can hear this. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. Our God whom we serve will answer us. Even though he does not answer us, we want to let you know we will not bow to you. That is zeal. 
He said, come and see my zeal for the Lord. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. I am not careful to answer you in this matter. But whether you like it or not, we are going to pray. You can't have zeal for prayer. David said, a day I spend in your court is better than a thousand years outside. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. Any person that makes you a watch night to someone that is a prayer has bewitched you. You have been bewitched. I hope you know you can be in church and be bewitched. Oh, you don't know? That is what they call charismatic witchcraft. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. You can't have zeal and hide it. It will show. Another person that has zeal for God was David. A man after God's own heart. Let's see what happened in Psalm 119 and verse 139. Psalm 119 verse 139. My zeal hath consumed me because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Verse 40, 140. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Go to verse 142. Thy righteousness is everlasting. Righteousness and thy law is thy truth. My, thy zeal has consumed me because thy enemies. You don't hide your zeal. Paul also was a zealous apostle. He said, for me to die is gain, but to live is Christ. Paul was willing to, to show his passion for Christ everywhere he went. Can people see God in you? If there is anything you cannot fake, it's what you stand for. What you stand for, people will know. That is why you must stand for the right thing. Don't stand for the wrong thing. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. For God's plan and purpose to come to pass in our life, we need a burning zeal for God. For the plan of God to come to pass in this church, we need a burning zeal for souls. Saturday we'll be, we'll be going out for outreach. We will prove our zeal for the Lord. We will prove our zeal for the Lord. What makes you to come out? Even when it is not convenient, is your zeal for the Lord. Not that you don't have something important to do. But any sacrifice you do for God pushes, pushes you up. It doesn't bring you down. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. But every time you are always saying I'm busy, it's a sign that your zeal for God is going down. Who is not busy? No, who is not busy? Everybody is busy. Everybody is busy. Do you know what? God will not put in your hand the blessings that is to come to others when you are not zealous for him. No wonder People that have zeal for his house, they are the priority that God wants to bless first. No wonder David said, my affection. Say with me, my affection. He said towards the house of my God. Today, my prayer for you, that whatever has taken your zeal away, it will be restored back to you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. No wonder Paul told the Galatian church, oh Galatians, who has bewitched you? He said, did you start in the spirit or end up in the flesh? What has happened to you? You were zealous for God when you started. But suddenly, your zeal has been wiped away. 
your zeal will be restored today. I say your zeal will be restored today. Your zeal for prayer will be restored today. Lastly, take this. When zeal and passion meet, you become unbeatable. When zeal and what? When zeal and passion meet, you become unbeatable. You become unstoppable. You become irresistible. Why? You are a moving machine. When zeal and passion meet, you become unstoppable. You become unbeatable. Why? Nothing brings you down. Every time your spirit man is jacked up, there are these, these two things must not be missing in you if you must reach the height that God wants you to reach. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press towards the mark. You must reach your mark. I say you must reach your mark. Rise up to your feet. Now, do you know that when you lack zeal, even in your work, your work begins to die in your hand. When you lack zeal, you lack creativity. When you lack zeal, you lack creativity to drive your work. But when zeal is at work, your creative instincts will be pushing out new ideas. New inspiration will be popping up. Why? Man, this man wants to reach out to something new. We are going to pray, Lord, David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. <laughs> and God said, concerning Joshua and Caleb, another spirit is within them. We are going to pray, Lord, renew my zeal. Renew my passion. Whatever has taken away my zeal, whatever has taken away my passion, let there be a restoration. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, renew my zeal. Before you partake of this communion, I want you to pray. Renew my zeal. As the deer pants after the waters, so does my soul long for thee. Renew my zeal. Renew my passion. In the name of Jesus, let my zeal be renewed. Let my passion fan into flame, Holy Spirit. Lord, steer up, fan afresh by your fire, new zeal. Fan afresh by your fire, new passion upon me. Zeal for the house of my God. Zeal that will keep me on the go. Zeal that will keep me pressing on for greater success, for greater accomplishment. Lehandoro shikoteri alando jekusizi ilateka lapode ligado shadoreanda lata. Holy Ghost, tear up afresh. Fresh zeal for greater success. Fresh zeal for greater advancement. Fresh zeal for greater advancement. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I will not lose my passion for prayer. I will not lose my passion for intercession. I will not lose my passion for, for the world. I will not lose my passion for souls. Lord, fresh zeal, fresh passion. Lift up your voice. Fan afresh. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Fresh zeal, fresh passion that will keep me on the go, pursuing for greater heights, pursuing for greater success, pursuing for greater accomplishment, for doing for greater success in the name of Jesus. Fresh zeal, fresh passion, fresh zeal, fresh passion. Holy Spirit, release upon me fresh fire upon my soul. Fresh fire upon my soul. You say you will take away the heart of stone and you will put upon them the heart of flesh. You will put upon them a new spirit. A new spirit. 
Zenandre Delete, Ilabo Shagada, Rezonaga Layande, Lerianga Talata, Indoble, Dujanga Yagada, Fresh Seed, Fresh Passion, Fresh Seed, Fresh Passion, that will put me on the go, that will put me on the go, in the name of Jesus, accomplishing new heights, accomplishing new heights, breaking new grounds, in the name of Jesus, accomplishing new success, new levels of results, new levels of exploits, new levels of manifestation, new dimensions of grace. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. You are changing levels. You are changing levels. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be on the same spot. I refuse to be on the same spot. Zika tola bayando. Zekupre klike tori ande shadaga. Rezo zekle prekle tosia. Endi ale shagado sadalata. En lape de kute kuje tosia. Liko kapra katosi zezia kataka. Leante keteri ando. Lo by your fire burn every chaff. Burn every chaff. Le honde bredi shekloze zoliata. Thank you father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say better amen. You are going to pray for yourself now. Lord, whatever has limited me mysteriously, as I partake of this communion, any evil cloud, any satanic manipulation over any area of my life, by the communion, let the powers manipulating issues in my life be destroyed by your blood, be destroyed by your flesh. Anything manipulating me mysteriously, Lord, by this communion, let the manipulation of the wicked be destroyed. 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 Redona Rushatolia Enzoza Kiko Preketoria Gelato Ribodo Shekuteliza Lingado Shanga Yagadagada Rezona Ke Preketoria Nagadagada Erede de Kuta Kute Prekletosesi Jesusa Ke Prokoto Ligado Shata Andeko Yanda La Rusha Danda Lembrodo Suteliga de Bosha Gadagada Rezakli Keterianga Labaradodos Lembragado Shiko Preketelia Gadagadaga as I partake of this communion, as I partake of this communion, even by the blood of sprinkling, let the manipulation of the wicked be destroyed. Let the manipulation of the wicked be destroyed. Let every sorcery of witchcraft, sorcery of the enemy, enchantments of the wicked, by the blood, let them be scattered. By the blood, let them be scattered. Let the manipulation of the wicked be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, Lambrado Shekosis in Anta, and Toyangara Delisha Rotapa. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. That amen is too weak. As you partake of this communion, any strange and contrary manifestation over your life, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Evil voices crying out against you by this communion, let them be silenced in the name of Jesus. Any man or woman mentioning your name before they are coven, I decree by this communion, let vengeance strike in their camp. The arrow designed against you. Whoever fired the arrow against you, I decree by this communion, vengeance against them in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you. Let this communion answer for our testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray. He turned my life around. Praise you. If you like, pray. Any mysterious power and evil personality on assignment to trouble my blessing, Lord, by this blood of sprinkling, by your vengeance, lay them to rest. Lay them to rest. Lift up your voice, pray from the depths of your heart. Any mysterious power and evil personality 
on assignment to trouble my blessing by the vengeance of the blood of sprinkling lay them to rest in the name of Jesus lay them to rest any mysterious power and evil personality on assignment to trouble my blessing by the vengeance of the blood of sprinkling lay them to rest in the name of Jesus Father by the blood of sprinkling lay them to rest Lehondoroshi in Kuprate Karosh Zesoli Katoria Resha Praklatu Zezia Enago Jendo Rio Zezusa Sheklepe Elarata Lagada Yagara Daga Yagada Gaga Elomende Gerega Dega Rega Dega Every evil personality Any mysterious power Troubling my blessing by the vengeance of the blood of sprinkling lay them to rest in the name of Jesus lay them to rest in the name of Jesus lay them to rest in the name of Jesus lay them to rest in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. thank you father in Jesus mighty name we have prayed whoever is the evil personality on assignment to trouble your blessing i decree by this mystery that god of oyedepo lay them to rest if you are saying amen say better amen say after me any man any woman conniving with witchcraft powers to trouble my blessing by the blood of sprinkling I decree let the vengeance of God strike upon your head in the name of Jesus so shall it be in Jesus name we pray before Sunday you will hear the testimony whoever is keeping night vigil to abort your blessing let the vengeance of the god of this commission strike their house in the name of jesus if you are saying amen say better amen any man or woman keeping vigil how your blessings will be truncated i decree this month of may the god of oyedepo lay them to rest in the name of jesus the god of oyedepo lay them to rest in the name of jesus Whoever vowed it will not be well with you. Let them be laid to rest in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any troubler of your blessing, God of Oyedepo, lay them to rest in the name of Jesus. You are laughing. Let them to rest in the name of Jesus. Anyone attacking your blessing, I decree by the blood of sprinkling let vengeance hit them in the name of Jesus say amen like a believer whoever vowed that you will not carry that blessing I decree let the killer angels of this commission locate them in the name of Jesus slay them in the name of Jesus they vow the vow against you I prophesy on this altar let it backfire against their head. Say amen like a believer. Before Sunday, you will hear news. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Tomorrow, good news.